Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last blueprint heavy video, we looked at casting versus interfaces and how you could actually swap cast nodes for interfaces. So what we're gonna do this time is actually gonna look at how we can replace interfaces and use them with event dispatches instead to send information through blueprint, blueprint communication, but just a little bit differently. So this is the interface level that we have set up. So once we collide with our cube, we turn our lights off. And we can see here that in this example, we actually have an array on the right containing all of our lights. So this is important. In this scenario, our box is talking to every single light that we have, or it's referenced to everything in the level. Whereas a blueprint dispatcher is essentially going to have our lights look at the box. So it's individual. So that list isn't going to be absolutely huge. We're going to have it individually done by the lights and some other blueprints. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to a new level for event dispatches. Same scenario, same setup. And I've already got a blueprint set up, so blueprint dispatcher collision. And all this has is a box collision, which we can see here. And we check to see if our player has walked through it, and then we're gonna do something with this. But to start, if we jump over to our third person character, we can actually have a look at what an event dispatcher is. So if we create an event dispatcher, You'll see down here, we get an event dispatcher. So we're gonna rename this. And in this scenario, we're gonna call this, let's call it game over. So if we drag this in, you'll see that we get a variety of different information or states basically that we, we can call. Uh, so we've got call, bind, unbind, unbind all, event and assign. Probably the most two important ones for someone just starting out, a beginner to event dispatches, is call and event. And these are gonna work like our blueprint interface did, where we have an event, and then we have a message. So our call is gonna call that event and then fire it for us, no matter whereabouts it is, which is exactly what we want. So in this scenario, we'd have a call, and that would say, okay, something's happened, we want to fire this event. For example, we could have this set up so once our player's health hits zero, we call our game over delegate, essentially our event dispatcher message, which then communicates out to anything that's referencing it, looking for this information. So rather than setting up a health system, we're just going to do event begin play. We will delay for, let's do three seconds, and then we will call our game over event. And after that, we will destroy our actor. So now once we press play, we should be able to go to our main level. And after two seconds, we should vanish, which is exactly what happens. So now we can actually tell this to do something else for us. So we have our event dispatcher destroys our actor. So this would fire once your, your player gets to zero health. But what if we want something else to be informed by this? For example, let's say we have a couple of lights in the scene, basically what we have in the interface, which once we die, they turn red. So let's delete that. So Unreal just crashed, so I've had to sort that back out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, we're gonna blueprint class, actor, BP underscore lights. And then we're gonna open this up. So add component point light and then we can go to event graph and what we want to do is we want to delete these but keep the event begin play and what we're going to do is we're going to use this event begin play to set a reference to our player so we can then get information from that that event or the the event dispatcher and to do that in this case we're actually going to need to cast to our player to get that information and the reason we're not using a variable which we could do is because typically in a example, you have a, a game mode. So your player doesn't exist in the game until it starts. So you normally cast to it to get the reference on start. And we're gonna do that in the lights. So we're gonna drag off event begin play. 
We're going to cast to third person character. So this is where binds and casting can work together. So from the object, we're going to get player pawn. And what we can do now is we can call that event or that game over dispatcher. So if we drag off here, you'll see that if we actually go down, we get event dispatchers and we can create one or we can search game over space game over and then bind event to game over and what this does is on begin play we get a reference to our third person character and we just say keep just listen to this so if we drag off the event so we'll do a custom event we'll call this game over what we can do now is we can get a reference to our light and color so set light color and we'll set this to red we hit compile and save and then we drop this into our level we'll see that starts off white and we can drag them in and then once we hit play there's no collision box but once we die they change so our character is essentially saying okay the players died and these lights are like okay we need to update now so it's listening to them but what you'll notice is we have no collision box and we have we haven't set a reference inside of our player to talk to these lights these lights just know that they need to be listening to the player but what that does is it means we can add more stuff into this so we have it currently that our player is sending the message to our lights and it's essentially listening for it so typically in most cases the blueprint that is going to be listing for information would often have the event dispatcher set up as we have it in our lights, which is listening to other things so we can hear from it. For example, what we could do is we could create an event dispatcher in here called um, add health. And we could do assign. And what assign does, it creates the bind and the value for us. So you see we've got add health. Let's do event begin play. Oh, we've already got one. So what we will do is we'll plug this in. What we'll do is we'll disconnect our game over stuff. And then we'll use the event begin play for our add health. And what this is going to do, it's going to listen to anything. So let's say we've got a health pack a collision object, um, uh, enemy AI, uh, a gun that shoots the player that needs to add health to it. We can do that through this. And what we could do is let's actually use this. So we have a retriggerable delay set to a value of two seconds. And we're going to promote this to a variable. Uh, we'll call this lifetime. And then I'm going to print string from this just so we can see the value. Connect that like so. And let's reorganize this so it's the other way around. Otherwise, we won't see our print string until our delay fires. Delete that one. And what this is essentially doing is saying if our lifetime hits zero, which the retrieval delay is going to be doing, we're going to call our game over, which then turns off our lights. So how do we add health well well one thing that we can do is actually select our health make sure we compile so we can see our information on the right and we can actually add a variable in here so we can do this health and then our boolean would be a float because that's what our lifetime is going to be and if we move this all along what we can do is we can set our lifetime value based on any of the information coming into this. So we hit compile and save. And what we essentially have is on begin play, we are getting a reference. We're saying, okay, we have an event. We're going to listen. We're going to start listening to other blueprints to add health. Once this fires, it's going to go through the line. We're going to add some values in our health and then we'll see the countdown or we should see the new value. 
and then retrievable delay will wait for that time to finish and then we'll call the game over and die. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our BP dispatcher collision and in here we're going to set it up so we actually send that information to our player. And because we can't set the value of our player, so we, we don't have a variable because technically our player won't exist if we're using a game mode. What we want to do is we want to cast to it again. So we're going to right click. So let's get player pawn. We could use the one that's already in there, but we'll just keep it neat. I'll do a cast to third person. And the reason we're doing this is because we still need a reference. And in this case, we're not actually doing any pointer variables, which we'll do in the, the next part. But in this one, we're just going to call that add health. And you see, we can search add health and we can call add health. So what this is doing is saying, once this fires, talk, talk to the third person character and get their bind and then add some values to it. So in this case, we can go to promote variable to health and we can promote this to a public variable. And now what that allows us to do is add some information in here. So we can hit compile 40, I'll save. And now if we drag a couple of these round so we can see it, I'm gonna make this visible. So now if we press play and we run up the stairs, we see that we've added 40 seconds to our health and now we don't die straight away. We're still hanging around. Our print string's not firing because it just does it once. But after 40 seconds, we'll die. And if we run through this one, you see it adds another 40 seconds. But because we made those public, we could actually change these to, let's say, let's do this one down here to two. And then this one to 40. So if we run upstairs first before we die, we set our timer to 40. And then if we run through this one, we set it to two. So after two seconds, we die. So that's how we're essentially communicating between them. And if you notice, we haven't set any references. So these cubes are just automatically going to our player and they can set different information. We have our lights, which also don't have any references. They're getting information from our player. So what's essentially happening is our lights and our boxes are just looking for the player. And once they interact with it, it knows that we need to fire that event. So if you, if you've been paying attention from the last videos of this one, you'll know that it's very different to what we've been working with in the interfaces specifically. So if we go over to our blueprint interfaces level and we have a look at this. We can see that the lights have no reference, but the box is firing to all of them and we've had to manually set it. We can do that with the event dispatches. So it's very similar. So it's the box to the lights or the player to the box to the lights. Whereas as our event dispatches, there is nothing here for some reason. So let's add those back in. We'll see that it's our boxes listening to our player and our lights listening to our player. So rather than doing a hierarchy, like bouncing around and setting events, we actually have it. So it's our player collides with our box and then the lights are just waiting for one of these boxes our player overlaps with the box and then the lights are just listening to our player to see when that's happened. So it allows us to extend more to it. So we do two, we'll die. So hopefully this is explaining how these work. And for one more example, so you can see how we can manually set references. I think what we'll do is we'll do, so once we jump on this cube, we can change the color of our lights. What we're going to do is I'm going to turn this cube that was here, which I've just deleted and recreate a blueprint class so we can jump on that and change the color of our light. So BP underscore uh, cube switch. Now we can open this up. Let's add a cube. Should be okay. And what we want to do is we want to scroll down on the right hand side and do on component begin hit. We can check to see if it's equal to our player. Do a branch. So same setup as normal just to be safe. And we can do this here. So typically we would have our event dispatches where we're listening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this one. So it fires on collision. And then we can do change lights color. And we'll do this as well. So what we get is if we hit compile, we will add a 
variable and this should be color let's do structure color actually it's not going to be color is it it'll be object type a linear color and then that should allow us to change the default value and hit okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this so we drag it in and we do call and i'm going to set this to random or let's split the pen and then we'll do random float in range so zero to one and then we'll have this for those colors there and we'll plug that in like so so what's happening now is once we hit our cube we're calling change color lights so we'll do print string just so we know that we've changed the color and now we can actually go back to our lights and we can have that information brought in so what we need is a reference to our cube switch so beep uh, cube switch bp underscore cube switch object reference and if we drag this in we can get our cube switch and from our event begin play we just need to initialize this and because we already know what actor type it is we hit compile we can drag off and search color and you can see here we've got call change color lights but if you remember we want to do a bind event so we want to bind our event and then from here we could actually right click oh, we can actually drag off and then do custom event and you'll see when we create that custom event we actually get access to the color or the random color so set random color so now our point lights we can get our color set light color in here and then through there and now none of this is firing on tick we're just waiting for this reference to be filled so we're going to make sure our cube switch is open or public so now if we go into our main level we can drag this in here and we still don't have any references in our cube it's going to be in our light so we can say this light is going to be listening to the cube we'll do this one as well and none of these references will fail because it doesn't matter if they're not fired they're just listening so we do save all we're going to run up the stairs so we don't die and then if we jump on the cube or hit it we should see them lights change color and that'll do it again and then if we run through the second bind which is two seconds we should all die and they change back to red so you can see that we have so the reason we're getting that error is because on begin play we're firing our event normally you would have a custom event which fires this to say like okay start listening out for it but what we can do is because we're not too worried about order we can do it is valid and then we can just add that in here. So if our cube switch has a reference to some lights, we can just say it's valid, so it's gonna work. So we can do it that way. So now if I run upstairs and then we hop onto our light, you see that we get a random color every time we hit it. We can go epilepsy mode based on what it is. And then if we run through, we die. And then we back out, we get no errors. So this is pretty much a long-winded way of saying that event dispatches and interface nodes are very similar and they do work the same way but it reduces the it changes the way blueprints communicate so rather than having our objects send information to something they're essentially just listening for something and they'll just be listening in the background constantly so as long as they're initialized on begin play they'll just be waiting for that event to fire rather than having to have everything cast or references pointed directly at everything else. For example, we can just do these lights as well. And because we have that is valid, these will now update. So it's just a good way of communicating and showing how you can actually send information between blueprints. So it's a, a very weird topic to go over, but event dispatches and blueprint interfaces are very similar overall. Blueprint interfaces send information, whereas event dispatchers listen for information. But they both require references. 
So they work similar to each other. Um, a good example of this would be, let's say our we have a cube and we want to walk through it. And we want to have, let's say, 100 enemy AI do something. Rather than having our cube have to have a list of all 100 enemy AI, our enemy AI just have, a, have to listen to that bind event. So they just say, okay, it actually happened. So that's each one. So you take references from 100 in one blueprint and you split them up into different ones so they can be activated and triggered at different times. So I really hope this one helped. If it did, please like and subscribe and even share to some beginners if you know any. Um, we do have a Discord. I think we've just hit over 850 users in there. So if you need any help with Blueprints or Unreal Engine in general, feel free to head on over. If you want to support the channel and help more videos like this and more in-depth stuff, then please consider going to the Patreon and checking that out. And big thank you to the Patreons themselves for making this video possible. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.